Hello, I'm Blair Lemke. Welcome to Let God Speak. Life is a journey that takes us on many different turns. For the Christian, though, this path does not wind chaotically or by chance. Rather, God is present as our guide and shepherd who faithfully leads us through the turns to life and eternity with him. Our Bible study today will reveal this. On our panel today, we have Maureen Aladechi and Hannah Nakagawa. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. As always, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to study your word today. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us as we study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today we begin a new Bible study series looking at the meaning of suffering, evil and death. And these realities, of course, can be quite difficult to understand mm. at the best of times. But uh, a key to understanding them is recognizing God as our guide and putting our, our trust in Him. Mm. And so our Bible series will go through this. And today, our particular topic or, or focus, our key lesson, uh, passage of Scripture that we're going to look at is in Psalm 23. And so I'm going to ask you, Hannah, yes. uh, what is the description of God that we are given at the beginning of this chapter in Psalm 23? Yes. So let's read Psalm 23, verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So God is described here as shepherd and both in Old Testament and New Testament. Um, yeah, he is described as shepherd um, who leads us and who cares for us and mm. guide us as well. An interesting description for God, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, Maureen, I want to ask you the question, how is this image of Jesus or God as a shepherd uh, a fitting image of God? Um, I think it's a really fitting image because when you look at um, sheep rearing, the shepherd takes care of, of his sheep. He provides for them. He guides them. He protects them from enemies and all that. And this is what God is to us. He guides us and protects us and uh, keeps us safe through um, all through life. Mm. That's true. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, you're exactly right. It does. Uh, in many ways, it is a fitting image, isn't it? And yeah. we're going to explore and look in Scripture at several places where this is the case. Of course, Psalm 23 is one. Mm. But I want to draw our attention just momentarily to John chapter 10. And we're going to read John chapter 10 verses 14 and 16 together. Let me read from God's word. It says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Uh, Hannah, I want to throw this question to you. What do we learn about Jesus uh, as a shepherd here in this passage? Yes, I love verse 15, how it says, I lay down my life for the sheep. Mm. That's not just like... Um, just a, like, you know, random care. It's just like he cares for us so much that he lays his life for us. And um, not only that, he knows us by name. And mm -hmm. whoever wants to um, open our heart and listen to his voice, um, he leads us, guide us to the right path as well. I mean, that's a pretty amazing shepherd, isn't it? Mm. A shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. Yes. You know, I can't think of many shepherds, uh, real life shepherds that would be willing <laughs> to lay down their life yeah. for the sheep. Mm. You know, oh, it's just a sheep. But mm. for Jesus, we are of such value to him that that is an easy decision to make. Mm. Yes. Well, let's turn our attention back to Psalm 23. And I want to read here verse three of the chapter. Uh, and I think we get another interesting insight into God as our shepherd and how he works. So Psalm 23, verse three, God's word says he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness mm -hmm. for his name's sake. Well, I want to throw this question to you, Maureen. Uh, what exactly are these paths of righteousness that we see here that the shepherd is leading his sheep into? Mm. Uh, there is a passage that actually really explains that. It's Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 35, verse 8, we'll go there. I 
Okay. Verse 5 says, uh, verse 8 says, A highway shall be there, and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. However, whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. So it, it's part, um, portraying life as a, a journey. It's a highway. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way from birth to death. And um, a highway of righteousness is a, like a life of righteousness towards God. Mm. Uh, we live a life of righteousness from birth to God through what we do and the choices we make and the decisions we go through and uh, experiences as well. Oh, that's interesting. So I want to ask you, Hannah, how, you know, in light of that reality, how do we know how to walk in this mm. path of righteousness? That's true. So um, let's read Psalm 119, uh, verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I guess that in this world, it's a dark world, like so many things happening, temptation, the world is a dark place, but this word of God will lead us, guide us. And another verse I want to go is John 16, verse um, 13. The Bible says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So through the word of God, but also through the spirit of God, he will lead us to all truth. Mm. Well, that's, that's amazing really that God communicates and, and leads us in this path in such clear ways through his word mm. and through his spirit. It's not something that we need to guess or stumble our way through. God reveals it to us yes. and promises to lead us actively through that experience. Mm. Um, well, that's, that's encouraging to hear. I want to uh, ask the question of you, Maureen. Mm. Uh, what happens to us as we choose to follow and walk in this path of righteousness? What, what does that look like? What happens to us as we do so? Yeah, um, the word of God in Proverbs um, chapter 4 and verse 18 says, um, But the path of the just is like the, si the shining sun. It shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. It, it's showing that every day as we continue to walk, we're walking from brighter to brighter. It's portraying brighter um, light each time we go. And it all leads up to um, the, the end is a perfect day, it says in the word. Um, yeah. Wow. So as we walk with God, mm. it, the path of righteousness, the direction that we're going becomes clearer and clearer. The light becomes brighter. And that's that's really I mean, I can relate to that so easily. Mm. My own experience with God as I've walked with God. You know, God doesn't choose to just, uh, you know, when we're in such a dark world, he doesn't just flick the light switch on, mm. <laughs> so to speak. You know, when you've been sleeping in a dark room and someone flicks the light switch on and you're like blinded, you can't see yeah. where you're walking around. But but. If you turn on the little night light mm. and just slowly adjust your eyes as God reveals more and more light to you, then, you know, your eyes can become accustomed and you can handle the light in, mm, in, in, the, in the right ways. And I just love how that, that verse there that you've pointed out pictures God is doing this thing, leading us faithfully through that experience on the path of righteousness as we're able to walk in that light. That so true. what a beautiful yeah. image and a beautiful picture. Um, I want to ask you, Hannah, Although the path of righteousness leads to God, which seems like anyone would want to go down that path yes. if it leads to God. Although mm. this is the case, we know that not everyone chooses to walk down the path of righteousness. And so I want to ask, why might this be the case? Yes, the answer, I guess, would be found in Matthew seven thirteen to 14. It says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to uh, destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I guess that God's way is, according to this, narrow gate and difficult um, difficult way that not many people choose it. Um, I guess as human, we always want um, selfishness. We are inclined to sin um, and actually to choose the path that's righteousness is narrow and actually difficult mm. and not many people choose it. Wow, that, that's interesting because I, I, it is interesting how that second path is pictured in that passage. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem like immediately an obvious 
description that Jesus is using. But that second path is contrasted with the righteous path as the wide path, the easy, the, um, you know, the, the second path is the, or the path that leads to death is that wide, easy yes. path mm. in, in contrast Majority. to the, you know, the harder path. Mm. Um, and so I want to ask you, Maureen, yeah. why this, uh, this path is pictured, the wide one that is, why this second path is pictured as so easy to walk in and the righteous path is being more difficult. Yeah, we're being humans. Uh, we, we like, we're so easily pulled into the worldly desires and it's so easy for us to indulge. Mm. But um, the path of righteousness is narrow because it takes intentional decisions. You have to decide, to decide day by day. You have to die mm. to self day by day to keep walking on that path. There is a verse in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 12, it says, yes, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will suffer persecution. Yeah, 312. And um, many people may avoid challenges and try to um, see what's the easier path. What's, what, what can I do that can make this easier and softer? But God is calling us to, to persevere. And with perseverance, our faith grows day by day. Mm. Mm, it's interesting. Some of those, that road, clearly the, the path of righteousness is a road that includes character development mm. and challenges. Refining, that's Refining, called. that's yeah. right. And that's a process that is a, a hard thing at times. Yes, mm. painful. <laughs> For, it's a painful thing. But, you know, we know from Scripture that God rebukes those whom He loves. Those whom He loves, He rebukes this, and chastens, yes, Scripture yeah. tells us. Yes. And so those who enter into this experience are really entering into experience of love with God. Mm. It's a difficult one, yeah. um, but a one that God wishes to lead us through. Yes. I want to read, uh, turn our attention to another passage of scripture here in Proverbs chapter five. And I want to read verses 21. It says here, for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord and he ponders all his paths. So the paths of our lives, according to scripture, are observed by God. They're visible to God and he examines them. Mm. So Hannah, what does God do if he sees that someone is walking on the wide path to mm. destruction that we've just read about in Matthew there? If he sees someone that is heading down that path, what's God's course of action? What does he do in such a situation? Yes, um, he appeals to them to come back, to return. Um, I want to read Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11, it says, um, say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live, turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Mm -hmm. It really pictures who God really is. Um, he doesn't, um, he has no pleasure in the death of wicked. He wants all of us to be saved and walk the path that God desire for us. Um, so um, it actually really grieves him when he sees us walking um, in the um, way of wickedness, mm. because of course, in the way of wickedness, there's pain. pain. Mm. We hurt, we hurt us and we hurt others as well. So um, yeah, but he is he desire for us to come back and he appeals to us to repent and come back to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's such a wonderful point that you brought up there that, you know, as we deviate from that path of righteousness, it hurts us and yes. it hurts others. Yeah. And God's instructions, his guidance, his laws are only ever there for our best interest. Mm. Uh, and what I love as well about what we see in this idea is that God honors our freedom of choice mm. so much that if we choose to walk on the wide path to destruction, God is so committed to freedom of choice. Yes. He's so committed to love mm. that he enables us to make a decision, even if it's not what he would wish. Mm. I love that. And, and we do see so clearly here that God's desire is not for the destruction of the wicked. Yes, yeah. he, he wants us to choose the path, um, the righteous path, but he doesn't force us. Wonderful. He yes. gives us choice. That's right. And, and if he did force us, this would be a, a cause of concern. Mm. Uh, we'd be worshipping and dealing with a dictator as opposed to someone who is trying to win us yeah. voluntarily yeah. through his love. It would pose a question of, is God really love if he's not letting us choose our own decisions mm. and giving us the freedom? 
Absolutely. So we see, you know, we see God appealing to us if we walk down these paths, but not mm-hmm. forcing us. Yes. Yeah. And I think I think that's such a beautiful point that you've drawn mm-hmm. out. Uh, let's return to Psalm 23, which, of course, is the key passage that we're looking at in our study today. And I want to draw our attention. Um, it's interesting as we look at Psalm 23 here that uh, to see how God leads his people. You know, you've, you've got him. The Lord, it says, Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, he leads them through the green pastures. They lay down by the still waters. Mm. They, they, there's a restoring of soul and these sorts of things that take place. Uh, but that's not the whole picture that we see as we read through this psalm and the way God leads his people. Uh, we see as in addition to God leading his people in these ways, there's also along the path of righteousness, the valley of the shadow of death. Mm. And this doesn't seem like a place that God would lead his people. Um, it doesn't, it's certainly not a place that we're eager to go to. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want to ask you, Maureen, yeah. why would this valley of the shadow of death be on the path of righteousness? Why would God lead us into a dark valley? Does God have a purpose for us in our suffering? Yes, he does. That would be my answer because uh, we're going to see in James chapter 1 and verse 2 to 4. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let the patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Uh, There is a statement that says God does not waste pain. Um, In our pain, God is enriching us. He's developing character. And... um, He's going to use this pain to make us a perfect being. So it's, it's not that he's out there sitting and enjoying us suffer, but he knows that through this pain, we're going to become, we're going to be refined like Hannah mentioned, and uh, we're going to be the perfect being that we need to be. Mm. Wow. Well, um, I suppose then as God leads through that valley, mm. then the greater we learn to trust God, the more confident we can be through those dark valleys per se, mm. um, and those twists and those turns, knowing that if we know that God's leading, mm. then that can, that can be a source of strength for us through those harder times. Well, let's read on because there's some additional interesting spots on this path of righteousness. Mm-hmm. It's not all that you would expect. Um, and if we read verse five on, in Psalm 23, uh, we read this. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mm. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Well, this is, of course, uh, kind of another interesting stop mm. <laughs> on the path of righteousness. Another unexpected element, I suppose you could say. And Hannah, I want to ask you, uh, is there a lesson? We see here that God leads. His, there's a table before enemies and these sorts of things. Is there a lesson in righteousness th- that we can learn from enemies that we can consider this morning or today? Yes. Um, Let me read Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Um, The Bible says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who um, spitefully use you and persecute you. Well, this is uh, spoken by Jesus, and this is, something that we don't do naturally. If we are hated, we want to hate back. That's the human nature, I guess. But um, actually, this is the opportunity that we can learn how God loves us and how God loves people as well. Jesus loves um, enemy even. Um, He um, um, forgive them uh, because they do not know what they are doing. That's what Jesus said when he was cru- being crucified. And when we love enemies, I think we also learn to be like God and mm. learn to know how God loves us as well. Wow. And so in a very real sense, our enemies provide an opportunity for us to grow yes. in righteousness, Yes, <laughs> which is quite uh, interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yes. that you, you can just see how God turns negative situations to good for our own character development and, yeah. and these sorts of things. Um, how are we called to respond to enemies who try to hurt us or damage our work or our ministry, Maureen? Yeah, um, there is a verse that gives us really good counsel on that. We'll go to uh, Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which raises against you in judgment, shall con- you shall condemn the- you with- to mean God. 
this is the right this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me says the Lord so God is not calling us to attack our enemies it's for God to um, to protect us God is going to protect us um, and we should not avenge them by ourselves uh, another verse in Romans tells us that um, if for as much as it's on your side live peace, peaceably with everyone mm. yeah that's interesting, and it really relates well to what we read in Psalm 23 there in verse 5, because you know David shows us as he's writing this psalm an interesting way to deal with their enemies, I think, as well, that mm. builds on what you've shared. He says that there'll be enemies around you, mm. but notice in verse 5 there, it's, it, it, anoint, uh, it points our direction to what God is doing. God's anointing his, your head with oil, your yeah. cup runs over. And so while there are enemies around, we see Scripture here pointing us to look at rather, rather than look at what the enemies are doing, look at what God is doing. Mm. And I think, you know, there's a, certainly there's a lesson here for us, Hannah. What, what, is, what, what lesson might there be for us here? Yes, I guess that instead of um, focusing on what's happening around you or what your enemy is doing, but we can focus on what God is doing. We can focus on Jesus as well. And when, especially when we focus on and meditate on what um, how Jesus went through the difficulties and suffering, we can also um, be healed by his, you know, um, suffering as well. So focus on Jesus, um, turn our eyes on God. Mm. Wow. Well, you know, it's, it is important as well, I think, as we deal with this enemy's element of this path of righteousness, mm. to realize that when we are fighting with enemies, mm. uh, you know, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, That's right. but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age. And mm. so any earthly enemy that we found, find ourselves interacting with, it's important to remember that, you know, there's a devil behind these things. We're not fighting people. Mm. All the, everyone we see in the world are people that God loves and wants to save, yes. yeah. even our enemies. And this is why we're called to pray for them and, and yes. consider these things. Uh, but here, you know, whether we like it or not, God, uh, we, there are enemies in the world, whether they be physical or supernatural enemies and whatnot. Uh, but God hasn't left us alone mm. when, we're, when we're in those situations with enemies. And I want to ask you, Maureen, what promises has God given us that we can claim Regarding our enemies. Yeah. Um, there is a verse in James chapter 4. Um, we'll go there. James chapter 4 and verse 7. I'll read for us. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know how you say there is a principality behind the person? You, you, if we attack our enemies body, body to body, it's us attacking the wrong enemy. Mm. The devil is our enemy. He's the ultimate enemy. If we resist him, if we fight, uh, in the back. He, God says he will flee. Mm. And we have that protection. And there is a verse I read earlier that says there is nothing that's going to, uh, God is not going to let us be won over by the enemy. Yeah, I think you know, that's such an important consideration as we think about how, how to deal with their enemies. We see so much in scripture around this point. Mm. Um, now, as we see very clearly in this psalm that God's leading his people, and I want to draw our attention here to verse 6, the last verse of the psalm. Uh, and it again directs our attention to God. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me mm. all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord mm. forever. Uh, when we are in the valley, uh, when we are with our enemies, it's sometimes tempting to believe that we have been left alone. Yes. But what this verse here guarantees us, uh, what gives us a promise uh, in these situations, Hannah. Yes, um, oh, I love how it says that um, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. So how hard the situation it is, how strong a temptation it is, how um, the attack was um, strong to us by the e enemy. We know that God's goodness never change. God's mercy um, never leave us. And um, His yeah, unfalling love, um, um, yeah, love never change. Unconditional love um, never change toward us. So we know that um, He will always be with us. He will um, go th through with us. No, no matter how we feel. And yeah, we would feel like, oh, am I alone in this situation? But no, He will always be with us. So trust God and um, claim the promise from the Bible. Well, what a comforting thought that is, isn't it? That mm. No matter what we face, God is in that situation yes. with us. And mm. I think 
that's a promise that so many have claimed uh, as they walk the Christian walk. Mm. Well, I want to ask uh, a final question for both of you. And uh, I want to ask what the take home lesson is from our study today mm. that we can take away from this and, and walk forward into our Christian experience with. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I really like the verse in Proverbs chapter three, verse uh, five to six. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Mm. God is known all over the Bible as the God of justice. When we try to carry out the justice by ourselves, we're going to fail to, um, to be uh, equal to everyone. And also God is one we can truly rely on. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love in that text as well how it says, trust in the Lord, not in your own understanding. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How prone are we to fall into the trap of trusting mm -hmm. in our own understanding? And when we maybe God leads us down some of these ex surprise spots on the, on the path of righteousness that we're like, come on, God, do you really know what you're doing? <laughs> yeah. um, but we see so clearly here that absolutely he does mm. and, and he's leading and he's guiding. Yes. Yeah, you were going to say something. Hannah. Yeah, um, because God has a bigger picture than us. We just see this little part and then thinking, what is God doing? But actually God knows what he's doing. So trust God with all our heart, even though we don't understand. That's mm -hmm. so important. Um, another verse that I wanted to share is some uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Um, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever um, he does shall prosper. Mm. Yeah, we can choose the path of righteous and meditate his law because it is good for us. Mm. It will lead us the um, path, yeah, path that uh, ultimately we can praise God for. So choose the um, path of God. And as we choose that path, uh, of course, we see there that, you know, that we flourish like mm. a tree. Yes. Uh, when those difficult times come, it's OK because we're connected to the source of life. Yes. And we know that God is our shepherd leading and guiding us through each of those experiences. Mm. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. That's all we have time for today. The journey of life takes us through many twists and turns. Whatever joys and obstacles we encounter on the path of righteousness, we can rest in the knowledge that we have a caring and loving shepherd, a faithful God, a faithful guide who will lead the way. Won't you put your trust in him today? We're glad you joined us today on Let God Speak. If you want to watch this program again or access teacher's notes, go to our website, 3abnaustralia.org.au. You can also email us on lgs at 3abnaustralia.org.au. Please join us again next time. God bless. You have been listening to Let God Speak, a production of 3ABN Australia Television. To catch up on past programs, please visit 3abnaustralia.org.au. Call us in Australia on 02 4973 3456 or email radio at 3abnaustralia.org.au. We'd love to hear from you.